Kentucky beat this team on its home floor by 16. You guys just produced the most lopsided loss that Boise State has suffered this year. How does that fit? Well, you know, uh, one, a uh, quality opponent tonight. We know Boise. We've got a lot of respect for uh, for their program and, and where they are right now, what they've done. I mean, they got a veteran team, a team that was postseason play a year ago. Uh, we knew coming in that we had an, an unbelievable challenge uh, from a defensive standpoint in terms of really having to guard guys that could really score the basketball. I mean, uh, you know, one of the better scoring teams, not only in our league, but also in the country. And uh, I thought our guys did a great job defensively tonight, really staying in front of the ball. Uh, you know, Mikey Thompson, you know, got to the basket a little bit. He was the one guy that, that got there a little bit consistently, but I thought they did a great job uh, defensively tonight. Your perimeter defense, two of 18 for the Broncos from three-point country. Then you limit this team to just 56 points overall. That's got to be mind-boggling even to you guys. I mean, that's 20 points plus under their average. Well, I, I think that first half was probably the best we played all year, to be honest with you. I think uh, in both ends of the floor, uh, you know, offensively at 46 points at the half. Uh, defensively in the, in the first half, the one for 11. Watkins has one rebound. And, and, and again, um, you know, biggest difference in that game up there uh, at their place and the separation they got was on second chance opportunities. And anytime you could do do the job that we did against one of the best offensive rebounders in the country in Watkins, um, you know, I had to feel good about what we were doing at that particular time. And your ball movement in the first half as good as any time this year? We had 10 assists. 10 assists at, uh, at, at, at halftime, and we had finished with 14 for the game. And, you know, a big emphasis for us is sharing the basketball, moving the basketball, player movement, ball movement. And uh, I thought that guys did a great job of that uh, in the first half. We got... You know, we had some pretty good movement in the second half. Could have been a little bit better. But, uh, but overall, I, I think the execution was, was really good from start to finish. You guys had the same halftime lead, identical score, 46-25, that they had over you at their place. But in that second half, they get to within 13. You get the little break there, and you guys put on the run to put the game away. What do you think made that difference in that 7 nothing spurt that said, you know what, Boise, you're not winning here tonight? Well, I think, again, the leadership of Tyler Johnson you know, and what he's been able to do over the course of uh, uh, this season, uh, just selling our guys down a little bit, understanding, hey, we've got to stay in attack mode on our terms and continue to try to get to the foul line, and then we've got to get stops on the other end. Uh, you know, I think he's done a great job with, with the leadership throughout the course of the year. Marvell's really grown uh, as well in terms of maturity, and, uh, and this team's still growing. There's still, you know, room for growth in terms of the maturity piece. Uh, but they're, they're, they're getting better, they're working hard, and uh, we're playing our best basketball the right time of year. Marvell, did you feel like you couldn't miss out there tonight? Because you didn't for a long time. Um, just, I, I felt good. My teammates just kept uh, giving me the ball. They knew I, hot. I was hot, so it was a lot of good ball movement, and I happened to be the open man. And how good did it feel to knock down that final one before you went out? That put the capper on the night for you. Uh, it felt good. I mean, I, I kind of knew we were coming out, so I was like, why not? I mean, I just took it and went in. Well, and you got those guys some extra seconds because Coach wouldn't have been able to call the timeout if you missed and they got the rebound. So. Yeah, I, I knew I was going to make it for them because it was for the team. So that's why I took the shot. What would you have for breakfast, though? Um, I had a milk. That's all. I didn't really eat breakfast. <laughs> hey, Tyler, uh, you know, you guys hadn't missed a free throw since the Wyoming game until you miss that one night. Is there some punishment you're going to have to pay with your teammates for that? No, uh, I don't know. I don't know, no. I just missed that one. I wasn't, wasn't uh, mentally engaged, if you will. And for you, in the first half, there were a couple times where you thought the ball would go in, it didn't, and it seemed like you were consciously trying to involve guys more, weren't trying to t get your own shot necessarily. Did that make you a little more unselfish? Did you kind of have a gear shift in your mind when you figured out maybe my shot's not falling as well as it has been? Well, I mean, you saw everybody. Everybody was making shots to, to open up the game. And, uh, you know, I missed a couple that I felt like, you know, I, those are the shots that I, um, I usually take, but I ended up missing them. But, yeah, um, you know, I just kind of, I mean, why not feed the hot hand? That's, you know, that's something that you're taught since you're, you're young. You know, when somebody's going get it to him, Bell was going, Bell had like 16 or so in the first half, he keep feeding the hot hand, let him go to work, he obviously has a mismatch, so uh, just let him go to work and uh, I'll play off of him. Coach, in any sport, if you don't beat yourself, you got a good chance to win, and football it's turnovers, and basketball it's also turnovers, and I look at your number here, four turnovers for the game, you're almost perfect in Logan, Utah, and again, four miscues, that's impressive basketball. 
I think uh, again on the assist to turnover ratio over the last uh, you know part of this second part of the conference play, we've done a great job of really taking care of the basketball and really executing. And really, again, I think from an offensive standpoint, really understanding when to attack, when not to attack, and, and playing on our terms. And uh, uh, these guys again have grown as a unit in terms of really getting a great feel for what we're trying to do offensively. What was it about this team that made you believe? Because you told us at the beginning of the year you liked these guys, and for so long we're sitting there and we're seeing losses. But what did you see now that we're seeing wins? But what did you see early that made you believe this could be a winning group? Well, I think for one, you have to like being around the guys you're coaching, you know, and and uh, and, and that's been a big deal for me this year, you know, and starting this summer. I, I like being around the guys we have. I like our guys, and uh, uh, I like their attitude. Uh, you know, this summer, this spring was good in terms of their approach. And, uh, you know, we've got, you know, no nonsense when we get out there between the lines. We don't have a lot of wasted time uh, in practice. We don't have to go in and, uh, you know, beat guys up for two and a half hours. We come in, we get done when we need to get done in the time fashion that we need to. And this group's really grown in, in that regards as well with attention to detail and the focus. But, you know, the attitude and the, and the wanting to be around the guys, that, that's the big piece.